Gamers, welcome back. I am still in the wheelchair. Gotta stay in there according to doctor's orders. Anyway, I created a one-of-a-kind thing here. Definitely an original. And for you people who work on the small engines, you might find this of use. So I'm gonna show you how to make one for yourself. Stay tuned. Okay, here's the problem I wanted to address. It involves spinning your engines over with a drill. Or the other day, what happened to me was, I, will, I put some fix -a flat in the tires on the Yamaha. I had it up on jacks. I didn't want to go for a ride, so I wanted to mix it in on the tires. You know, use the drill. And then you use one of your handy dandy drill adapters to get a socket on your drill. So, what I did, I thought it'd be tricky. I put, turn the torque down on the drill here, on the cow, and then started out easy with the drill, and I figured when I leave off on the trigger, it's just gonna skip in the opposite direction. Well, guess what? I found out that don't work, so don't do that. It ripped the drill right out of my hands, and damn near broke my wrist. So here's what I created. Uh, it's a starter drive, basically. It only turns in one direction. In the other direction, it freewheels. These are on your car, so if you hold the key in when the motor starts, and it would literally grenade the starter because it would over rev it. So this eliminates that from ever happening. Now, if you're gonna build one of these, the first thing you wanna do is make sure it drives in the proper direction. So uh, this is counterclockwise direction. You should know that. I think maybe like Volkswagen or something where the starter's on the opposite side of the bell housing. Maybe they got one that would go in the right direction if you need one going clockwise. So, what this really is, a starter drive off a of Chevrolet. I'll show you the pictures up in the corners here. That one, or yeah, that one. Anyway, I knocked all the teeth off of it here with the lathe, and this is a 3 8 socket drive right here, and I made a little bushing up for in here to slide that in before I welded this all on. On the other end, I made a bushing up, and then I got a 5 16 Allen wrench that goes into the drill. So, you want to see how it works? Okay. <laughs> now, originally what I come up with was I was using this drill here. It's pretty gutless. And you got it in low, it would turn it over. But, what was happening is inside the chuck, there's always a left-hand threaded screw. So, when you're running the drill backwards, then that would keep the chuck from coming off. Well, I sheared two of them off, so I figured it's time to move on. We got to figure out something better. So from there, I went to my old Dewalt drill. I put the hand thing on here to hold it so I could set it right on that foot peg, hit the go button. But the problem is this didn't have enough snot in, in second gear. I had to run it in first. It turned over quite hard. Still not the answer. Then I had to try my Milwaukee super powered one here with the cord that's really shot. Anyway, uh, years ago, I put a half inch chuck on this. I was famous for that, so you can use a 3 8 drill variable speed. This is a nice drill, and this was spinning over like crazy. But, once again, we still have a problem. If I'm out somewhere going riding, I still want the feature of having a battery powered drill. I started researching drills, and I didn't want to go to 20 volt stuff, but anyway, let's take a chance. I ordered this drill here. Now, one of the reviews for torque, it said this drill has more torque in third gear than the old XP drill had in first gear. I find that hard to believe, but I thought, well, that's pretty impressive if it will do that. So I ordered it and it came in. Let's see how this works. And we're all set up and you can see here we got the free wheel in one direction. Maybe you'll be able to see it too once I spin the motor. But uh, I like it too, we can set the handle right on a foot peg and just hit the go button. This is great, by the way, if you're doing some in-shop tuning uh, or if you have a broken leg. I was actually, I got a conduit on the kicker. I was using my hands to start this machine before I did this deal here. Yeah, like I said, the other drill, yeah, just with the regular setup even, it just didn't have the balls to spin this. So let's give you a, a show here on how this guy works. So, let's 
let's leave the switch off once. I'll show you how fast this thing spins it. Oh, by the way, I got it in second gear and it's rated at 1300 RPMs in second gear. That's how fast it spins. Now, but we still have one more problem I want to overcome here. And there's the camera. Hi, how are you? Uh, you hear how the drill kicks out once in a while, but it has a mass, massive load, it'll kick out. Now, I was reading a book on the drill, and it sounded like the batteries are what was shutting off the power to the drill. I did some testing. That's not so. So, you want to see what I'm working on now? I'll give you a tour. We'll get away from the drill buffet here and head on over to the electric bench. I'm going to show you what I'm working on here. Now, where I'm at is, I started on this course already. I wanted to piggyback these two. I don't know how I'm going to Velcro or two-sided tape, so you can take them apart. I'm going to put some quick connects on the sides here. And what I had to do was so the polarity, so I ain't got to wrap the wires all the way around the case. I'm going to have polarity opposite on this where it comes out each side across. So then you ain't got to have a wiring mess kind of sole. And the white marker here, what I'm doing with that is I keep setting the cover on and then you know where you got a die grind on the bottom side. So it's not pinching on the wires. I was kind of hoping 5 amp hour 10 is much better than 5. I'm hoping that the drill won't kick out now. We're going to find out, aren't we? Right, I got side B done here now, and you can see how oh, the red comes out on the same side as the red. The black comes out the same side as the black. The reason for the madness, when you piggyback them here, then the wires won't have to wrap all the way around to the other side. And why I don't film this stuff is for me to get this clearance right on everything. It was only about 20 trips back and forth to the die grinder, so you ain't got to overcut everything. Didn't want to bore you with that. So I'll get this back together and we shall continue. Alright, before I finish this up with connectors and Velcro or whatever, I kind of want to test it out because this is a unsure thing here. We're going to have twice the current but the same voltage. So I want to see if the drill kicks out like it did before. Let's give this a try. Turn the thing to run here and we'll give her a shot. I think it's worse. Well, that answers that question. This is a total fail on my behalf, but you don't know if you don't try. Let's move on to another thought, perhaps. Oh, one last idea for this deal here, for if this would help. What we have here, I have two 12 volt batteries. That These are off my pump station for diesel fuel. I just throw them on the top of my 55 barrel. Uh, but I disconnected all my stuff here where I had these in parallel. I now have them wired in a series. So 12 volt, 12 volt, this makes for 24. Now I'm going to hook this on the drill here in a moment, which will jump the voltage up probably about three volts. I'm going to give that a try. That's my last resort here for what I'm doing here. If that don't work, the only option would be to go inside the drill and see if I could do something. Okay, I got the switch on run for the engine. I don't want to leave this on too long where this is a little bit higher than voltage and what these are, but we'll make the connection here. Let's give this a try. Okay, disconnect them. Okay, higher voltage makes it actually worse. Why well, was after this setup was if we're out somewhere and it's 10 below and we go to an ice event, I wanted to make sure that uh, this would work. 
It probably would, but I thought when you hit the goal button every time, if it would work for sure, that would really be wonderful. As far as I'm concerned, everything I did here, total fail, but you don't know until you try. And one thing that does make me happy out of this whole deal, I was going to buy one of them 9 amp hour batteries, very volt, and they're over $200. And at least now I know if I was to buy one of them batteries, there wouldn't have been no benefit or gain. And the other thing is, this is the only tool I have at the present time that's 20 volts, so that's why I really didn't want to spend the money. If you want to see what them batteries were for, this is full of diesel fuel here. Something I put together a while back. I don't know if that's stuff I should even be making videos on, but I welded a bun in here to fill it at the fuel station. Then I got a chain that goes across here where I can use my air hoist to set this in the back of my truck or take it out and of course you got the dolly then to roll it around. Now what's handy about this is uh, I can go out with the fuel in my truck, go out by the case tractor, I already have power to run the pump. And this just plugs into here where I got these batteries paralleled and that way they run a long time on one charge. Well tubers, I guess I'm going to take these batteries back apart, take the wires out of them and put a little duck on each hole. And uh, yeah, I thought, uh, let me flip the screen around here. I thought maybe some of you folks would like to see every day in a win around here, even though you think it might be, but I like trying experimental stuff. It's kind of fun. And hey, I want to thank you folks for last time for all the nice comments on my video where I got hurt. I just, I was overwhelmed with happiness reading all of them. It's depressing being in the wheelchair for weeks on end, and that was so kind of everyone. So. I'll keep some more videos coming about different stuff, as I said. We're not going to stick to the three-wheelers, so don't run away. And uh, Anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope to see you back here soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, did you expect any less? I can't leave this story unanswered, so my curiosity was killing me. If you folks want to have a look at what's inside one of these, all kinds of parts and pieces fell out. Anyway, uh, as I suspected on the back side of the motor here, uh, they have a sensor for RPM, and when it senses that it's not revving up fast enough or sensing a stall, that's when it shuts that motor down. Unfortunately, the magnet right here, and of course partial for that, but I do believe that's also telling RPM on this piece here. So, unfortunately, no way around what I wanted to do for the stall when it shuts down, but it does work, I guess, as is, so we're going to have to leave things at that. But at least I got the rest of the story here now, so... Kind of neat to take these things apart. Man, they got some technology nowadays. Actually, a brushless motor, too. I don't know if you people uh, understand that part of it. But it's a three-phase motor, then. You have your uh, three, three leads going into it. You can see down there. And uh, what they do is they change DC to AC. And then they can convert and modulate the frequency of the current going through the motor to vary the speed. But anyway... Now we know the rest of the story, though you might want to see this one too, because I bet some of you folks knew I was going to take this thing apart. Hopefully, I can get it back together. And just in case you people decide to take one of these apart for yourself, there's one part I was almost going to call optional. That's this clip right here, but you know it's a detent for a slide of some kind. And I found it. You can see where it rides on right there, and well, I don't know if I can get that in here easily, but that's for the uh, light in the front for the intensity of him, and he goes straight down onto that piece right there. And when he's installed, you can see he goes straight down right there, and then he rides on the little detents in there. And Mr. Lathe bailed me out for one today, too. I don't have a T10 Torx that's, that will fit way down in the glue. So we went down the lathe and chucked him in there. Now we ain't got to buy one. We could just not modify the case, and we can still get him in there. Hey, cool, huh? Anyway, let's get the rest together. 
Now, one last tip for you folks. If you ever work on such an animal, make sure when you're putting the cases all together, everything should stay in place. If something has a gap yet, you might have something together wrong. So you definitely would want to check that. Otherwise, you tighten up the fasteners, you're probably going to bust something. So uh, let's try this bad boy out. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Really? Oh, maybe that would help. Thanks for watching. I gotta share a little story with you folks quick here too. Uh, when I first started going for my first checkup where they x-ray up on your leg and stuff, see all you're doing in that, I asked the doctor, I, I told the doctor, I said, I got a bunch of kickstart machines. And anyway, I was wondering when I get released, if uh, how long it takes for my leg to heal 100% to be able to do that. Well, the last time I was in there to see him, I thought maybe I'd get released then. And uh, I don't know, I got a funny feeling he remembered me asking that and was thinking he didn't want a warranty claim. So maybe he's holding me off a little more than otherwise he would have. But all I know is when I go in, in a couple weeks from now, I'm going to tell him I have an electric start for all my kickstart machines now. So that'll ease his mind a little bit. So. You don't have to worry about getting a warranty claim. <laughs> anyway, hope you folks enjoyed the video stuff. Uh, thought I'd throw a little extra in, so you know I don't get to see you often enough. And we'll catch you in the near future. Thanks again for watching and all the kind comments. Much appreciated. Bye bye.